Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 97 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about changing password by providing the current password. In fact, in reality, users can change the password anytime by providing their current password. Obviously, for that, they have to be logged in. Okay, so to achieve this, the first thing to do is to write a stored procedure which changes the uh, user's password based on their current password. So if you look at the stored procedure that I have here, um, you know, the stored procedure name itself is SP, change password using current password. And if you look at the stored procedure, it takes in three input parameters. The username for which we want to change the password, the current password and the new password to which we want to change. Okay, so three input parameters. Now, what are we doing here? This is the TBL users table. So, if you look at the users table, it has got username and password. And look at this, we are passing in username and current password. Okay, so if the username and current password matches with a row in this table, then for that username, we want to update the password with this new password that's coming into the stored procedure. And look at this line here, it's exactly what it's doing there. Okay, select ID from TBL users where username is equal to at username and password is equal to at current password, whatever input parameters that's coming. So if that select query returns something, the exist function will return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. If it returns true, what are we doing? Okay, if it returns true, we know that the username and password are correct. And for that username, we want to change the password using this new password and that's what we are doing here update tbl users set password is equal to add new password where username is equal to you know whatever the username that comes in and finally what we are doing select one as is password changed one you know we will convert that to a boolean value which gets converted to true okay so that in case if the username and current password matches with a row in tbl users table if it doesn't match then this exist function will return false and it comes to the else block so when it comes to the else block all we are doing here is select zero as his password change because we are not changing the password why you know he has provided an invalid or wrong current password for that username okay so that's why we are saying select zero as his password changed Okay, so we need to invoke the stored procedure obviously from within our .NET application. We're going to continue where, where, where we left off in the previous session of this video series. Okay, so first of all, what I need to do when I click the save button, I need to call, you know, the stored procedure from our .NET application. And to do that, if you remember, in the previous session of this video series, we have written a function, you know, a generic function that executes a stored procedure, you know, all you have to do is provide the name of the stored procedure and the list of parameters it expects. And if you remember, uh, this stored procedure is expecting three input parameters. So we need to supply the list of all these three input parameters. Okay, so I'm going to invoke uh, this function. Okay, and to invoke that function, I have actually written another function here. So let's go ahead and copy that function. And what is the stored procedure called? The stored procedure is called as SP change password using current password okay so I'm gonna name my function also accordingly so I'm gonna call this function private change password um, change user password using current password and those are the parameters and look at that it's very straightforward uh, it's exactly similar to how we have invoked the other functions like change user password is password reset link valid you know, it's very similar to those functions. So all you're doing here, the first thing is you're creating a list of parameter object, parameter list. So since that is a list, and since our stored procedure is expecting three input parameters, we need to pass those three input parameters. So this is the first input parameters. At username is the name of the parameter. So at username. And then the most important thing to keep in mind here is how do I get the username? Because if you look at the change password page, I don't have a text box where I ask the user to enter his username. And it doesn't make sense because the user is already logged in. So we should have an idea about how we can get the logged in user's name. Okay. Now, to get the logged in user's name, you can use user.identity.name. And look at this name property. It's a string property. We have spoken about this in the previous sessions of this video series when we have discussed about forms authentication. 
okay so this user dot identity dot name will return the username of the logged in user if the user is already logged in if the user is not logged in then user dot identity dot name this property will be an empty string okay so that's the key okay so we can get the username using user dot identity dot name and look at this keep this point in mind user dot identity dot name will be an empty string if the user is not logged in okay so because we'll be using that point elsewhere to make some decisions okay so that's the first SQL parameter object and this is a second parameter object so what's the second parameter it expects a current password so that's what we are passing in here the current password and again you know since the passwords within the database are hashed we need to hash them before we actually send it to the database so that's why we are using this function hash password for storing in config file and we are taking the current password and we are using SHA1 algorithm to hash it okay so that's current password and along the same lines new password and if you remember new password is coming from txt new password text box that's present on this page okay so we have all the three parameter objects that we want and once we have this list of parameter objects all you have to do is invoke that execute sp function and pass the name of the stored procedure that we want to execute in this case sp change password using current password and then the list of parameter objects and this function is going to return a true or a false which is what is returned by this function in turn so all you have to do right now is make some changes to your page load function and to your button click because look at this 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 page this one page is going to work for both you know for reset password link you know when the user clicks on that link it's going to work correctly as well as if the user is logged in when they click on change password you know link on any page they should be able to change the password by providing their current password okay so this page is going to serve both the purposes so let's see how to do that so we have to obviously we have the methods which can do you know that here but we need to call them appropriately and at the right time so to the changes that we have to do within the page load event let me copy and paste these changes and then I'll explain what we are doing here so within the page load event look at that the first thing this is very important line here now the user should be able to land on this page change password page only on two occasions so this is page load event and look at what we are doing here the first check if request.query string of UID is null if the UID is not present you know when the user lands on this page if this UID is not present and also if user.identity.name is empty which means that he is an unauthenticated or anonymous user so if he is an anonymous user and if we don't have a UID within the query string of the URL then there's no business for the user to be on this page so what we are doing we're actually redirecting the user back to the login page so he cannot come to change password page either one of these conditions have to be false for him to actually change his password so to change his password he should either be logged in or you know if you're not logged in you have forgotten your password then you know there should be a UID you 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 should have uh, requested for a password reset link to be sent to your registered email address okay so if that's the case if, if any of these conditions um, are true then the page load continues this this line will not be executed so what are we doing here if request.query string of UID not equal to null, if it's not equal to null, then what does that mean? That means the UID is present within the URL. So if the UID is present within the URL, then we know he's coming to change his password using a password reset link. So if that's the case, we first check if the password reset link is valid or not. And you know what this function does. We have discussed about this in the previous session. If this function is going to return false, then we know that it's it's the password reset link has expired or is in is invalid and that's what is the message that we are showing here and look at this this is most important tr current password dot visible is equal to false what is this doing here because if you remember on change password page now we have another text box for the user to enter their current password remember if the user is trying to change their password using a password reset link they do not provide a current password so there's no reason for us why this this text box and this label should be shown 
okay so for that purpose if you look at the uh, HTML here for this uh, table row I have included an I ID here TR current password and I have included this run it is equal to server attribute so I can modify the visibility of this table row within the code behind file so within the code behind file I'm using that ID and if there is a UID within the URL then I know that the user is trying to change the password using the password reset link and he, there's no need for this row to be visible and here I'm setting that to false on the other hand if the user dot identity dot name is not equal to empty string which means the user is logged in if this condition is false it will come here and it will check okay is the user logged in how do we know that if the user dot identity dot name is not empty the user we have some sort of username there which means the user is authenticated then show the current row I mean TR current password row okay because he is trying to change his password using his current password so we should show that row which which has the text box for him to enter the new password I mean the current password okay so that's the change within the page load event along the same lines when I click save button here I have to you know call the appropriate function to update the password okay so let's look at what are the changes now this is again another simple piece of code it's just I mean we need to understand what we need to call when so within the button click event the change that we have to make is this so if a request dot look at that so there are two conditions here one is the first one so that's the first condition so what's that condition if request dot query string of UID is not equal to null if it's not equal to null then if this condition is true only then will it come to this condition to execute this function okay so if request dot query string of UID is not equal to null then we know that the user is trying to change the password using a password reset link uh, in which case we want to call the change user password function we have discussed about this in the previous session of this video series so if you haven't watched that I would strongly encourage you to do so okay so if this condition is true the first condition if request dot query string of UID not equal to null then only will it come to this and part otherwise it will not come to this and part instead it will check this condition this one condition here okay so if if this is if this condition the single condition is false it will skip this and it will come here user dot identity dot name okay if that is not equal to an empty string that means user is trying to change his password you know by by providing his current password he's logged in okay so in which case call this function change user password um, using current password now if you're thinking this might cause a performance issue it won't because if this condition is false it will skip executing this function call similarly if this condition is false it will skip executing this it will execute this call only if this condition is true and remember the same logic applies here as well okay so if any of this condition so either this condition or this condition is true then we know that the user has changed the password successfully in which case we we specify this password changed successfully else what we are going to do we're going to display an error message but we have to show an in you know a correct error message if the user is trying to change the password by providing their current password then and if they supply an invalid current password then we'll have to show invalid current password and how can we determine that by using the visibility of this row if this row is visible we know that you know he is providing the current use password to change the password okay and if they have failed to update the password then we know that we have to display this message otherwise this message okay so let's build this and see if it's gonna work so if you look at uh, uh, currently you know the TBL reset request table and TBL users table in TBL reset request I have a valid um, you know what do you say a reset request there and that matches this URL that you see here so it ends in 8FA so let me go ahead let me build the application first control shift B and let me click on this URL now okay so I land on this page now 
okay look at that change password look at that tr you know the current password there's no provision for me to enter a current password i can go ahead and change my password so test and test is the password if i click save so password changed successfully now look at this if i try to land on this page i'm not providing the uid and i'm not logged in so i click enter now look at what's going to happen i am redirected to login page and why it's that if you remember in the page load event we are doing that check if the query string is not present with name uid and if user dot identity dot name is empty string it will be empty string here because i'm not logged in then redirect me to the login page okay now okay let me log in now i know the username is test and the password is test so I log in and look at this on the welcome page I have this change password link I click on this change password link and it takes me to the change password page look at that now I am logged in now when I click on this change password page look at that I, I landed on change password page and I'm here and look at this current password is shown so I can change my current pa I mean current password to a new password okay so I'm providing my current password test and my new password is test1 test1 i click save look at that password changed successfully now let me try to change it you know back to test1 so i provided my current password let me provide an invalid current password and maybe that's my new password confirm new password and i try to click this look at that invalid current password it gives the error message also a meaningful error message okay and on the other hand look at that I try to click on this link again so if you remember this link is not a valid link anymore because why I changed my password once so that's gone there we don't have a reset an entry in TBL reset password request table so obviously now when I click on this link when the page loads up look at that password reset link has expired or is invalid now I'm trying to change the password in spite of the link having expired and I click save look at what's going to happen password reset link has expired or is invalid okay on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day